Today we are going to start quantitative graphical method for analysis of cardiac failure or in simple words when cardiac failure occurs when the heart is unable to pump enough blood to satisfy the needs of the body this condition of cardiac failure when presented with the help of a graph and exactly quantified is known as quantitative graphical method for analysis of cardiac failure and here is the example of one graph through which we are going to explain the cardiac failure with graphical method now the first uh, the first thing which we are going to explain with this graph is the graphical analysis of acute heart failure and chronic compensation and after that we will uh, also discuss analysis of heart failure and without compensation so let's start the graphical analysis of acute heart failure and chronic compensation in simple words when acute heart failure occur when the heart suddenly fails acute sudden failure of the heart occurs and the heart is unable to pump enough blood to satisfy the needs of the human body and then with the passage of time some compensation occurs or in simple words when the heart gains its ability back and to pump the blood initially there is acute heart failure there is failure of the heart to pump blood to the peripheries and then with the passage of time compensation occur the heart regains its ability to pump the blood again to the body so this thing when presented with the help of the graph will be graphical analysis of acute heart failure and chronic compensation now let's start in this graph we have shown cardiac output and venous return on the y axis here on this y axis we have shown the cardiac output and venous return on the x axis we have shown the right atrial pressure or pressure at this point here is the right atrium blood from the body is returning into the right atrium going into the right ventricle from the right ventricle going into the lung in the lungs the blood gets oxygenated and then from the lungs oxygenated blood comes into the left atrium from the left atrium into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle into the whole of the body now normally the amount of blood that is coming to the heart and the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart is equal and that is around 5 liters per minute the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart every minute is basically cardiac output it is cardiac output it has been represented on y axis of the graph and the amount of blood that returns to the heart the amount of blood that returns back to the heart is venous return so normally in normal circumstances the cardiac output is equal to venous return and its value is 5 liters around 5 liters per minute this is these are the normal values of cardiac output and venous return now the normal cardiac output return has been shown with the help of this red color graph this is the red color graph and this red color graph here is showing the normal venous return the point at which these two graphs meet each other the normal cardiac output graph and the normal venous return graph the point at which these two meet each other is known as point a at this point at this point the cardiac output is equal to the cardiac output is equal to venous return and it is 5 liters per minute now suppose for example acute heart failure occurs there is some problem in the heart there is some problem in the heart the blood supply to the heart muscle is basically stopped for example suddenly acutely acute heart failure occurs the suddenly the heart is unable to pump blood into the periphery so what happens this normal cardiac this normal cardiac output graph this normal cardiac output graph it suddenly falls down it suddenly falls down from this level to this level but the amount of blood that is returning to the heart initially is normal or the venous return graph the venous return graph initially is normal so what happens that this this graph the cardiac output graph this graph now meets with the graph of the venous return it meets this new this graph at a new point which has been labeled as point b now at point b we see that because the heart is unable to pump enough blood so the amount of blood that the heart is pumping every minute is now 2 liters per minute the normal heart was pumping around 5 liters per minute and this heart after developing acute heart failure due to some reason due to like this acute heart failure could be due to a blockage in the coronary vessels or this could this could be due to some arrhythmias or due, this could be due to some trauma or anything but the the amount of blood that the heart is pumping has fallen down so the graph this normal graph has fallen down and this graph this blue color graph this graph is meeting the normal venous return graph at this new point which is point b which is point b now one thing we should remember that normally that normally the the amount the cardiac output and the venous return graph when they meet each other at this point a which is 5 liters per minute at this point the pressure in the right atrium the pressure in the right atrium at this is zero the pressure here is 0 mm of mercury 0 mm of mercury and normally the right atrial pressure uh, sorry the mean fill, mean filling pressure the mean systemic filling pressure mean sys mean systemic filling pressure the pressure with the help of which the blood is being pumped towards the left the right atrium this mean systemic filling pressure that is also around 6 or 7 mm of mercury now 
this x axis this black line this black line is basically showing the pressure in the right atrium pressure at this point a right atrium but the point the point at which this this x axis this black color line is meeting the graph of the venous return at this point and at this point and at this point when this right atrial pressure line this black color line when meets with the graph of the venous return with the graph of the venous return that exact point is known as the mean systemic filling pressure so normally this mean systemic filling pressure for this normal venous return graph is around 6 to 7 6 to 7 millimeter of mercury or this basically this pressure is pushing the blood towards the right atrium now when the cardiac output falls what happens is that systemic system sympathetic system gets activated sympathetic system get activated sympathetic now what happens is that the sympathetic system from the brain gets activated and it increases the heart rate it activates the heart it also basically activates the blood vessels and it basically increase the heart rate the sympathetic system the sympathetic system which is basically activation with the help of some neurons the sympathetic nerves it pumps it starts pumping the heart more the heart rate basically increases and the pumping power the power with which the heart pumps the blood also increases and similarly sympathetic system also contracts the blood vessel so the mean systemic filling pressure also increases with all these factors within a few seconds within like 30 seconds this new graph of cardiac output is achieved the cardiac output now basically increases from this point to this point the cardiac output has now increased with the help of sympathetic activation because the sympathetic nerves has increased the heart rate they have increased the contraction power of the heart and the sympathetic system also basically increased the mean systemic filling pressure so the venous return graph also shifts upward and it also shifts outward so what happens this this new venous return graph is formed this new venous return graph is formed now the cardiac output has increased and the venous return has also increased the right atrial pressure the pressure at this point has also increased and the mean systemic filling pressure has also increased the pressure with which the blood is being pushed here so a new point is achieved which is point c this is point c now at the point c at the point c the cardiac output the new cardiac output curve and the new venous return curve are meeting now initially the normal cardiac output and venous return were 5 liters per minute when cardiac output suddenly decreased the cardiac output became 2 liters per minute at this point the right atrial pressure increased the right atrial pressure increased to this 4 4 millimeter of mercury initially the cardiac the right atrial pressure pressure at this point was 0 millimeter of mercury but when cardiac output decreased the right atrial pressure the pressure at this point increased to 4 millimeter of mercury and now when the venous return curve has also been shifted upward and rightward now the mean systemic filling pressure the mean systemic filling pressure has also increased from this point to this point which initially was around 6 or 7 is now 10 millimeter of mercury it is now 10 millimeter of mercury so with the with the increase in heart rate and with the increase in the pumping power of the heart and with the contraction of the blood vessel due to sympathetic system activation because whenever the heart the cardiac output falls the sympathetic system activates so the, symp the sympathetic system has increased the cardiac output curve it has shifted the cardiac output curve upwards and similarly the sympathetic system has shifted the venous return curve upward and rightward and they both these new curves these blue color curves they meet at point c and the, at point c now the cardiac output is four liter per minute the cardiac output now is 4 liters per minute the, the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure has further increased and it is now 5 millimeters of mercury it is now 5 millimeters of mercury and the mean systemic filling pressure the pressure with which the blood is being pumped toward the right atrium is now 10 millimeter of mercury now what happens is that with further time now compensation is coming compensation is going on sympathetic system is done some of the compensation now the kidneys will start retaining the fluid how the kidneys retain the fluid is something which we discussed previously in our last few lectures now the because the pumping power of the heart has decreased so the blood supply to the kidneys the blood supply to the kidneys will decrease the kidneys will basically try to decrease the urine the amount of urine that goes out the amount of urine formation will decrease and fluid will be retained in the body fluid will be retained in the body which will be basically known as fluid retention with the help of fluid retention the amount of fluid in the body increases which further increases the venous return curve now this venous return curve shift even upward and more rightward it shifts upward and rightward initially it shifted to this point now this new venous return curve have has shifted more upward and more rightward and at the same time the heart has slightly improved or the heart has slightly recovered 
from its injury so which, which has also basically pushed or increased the cardiac output curve from this level to this new cardiac output curve now what happens is that new cardiac output curve and new venous return curve has have been formed and they both meet each other at a new point which is point d which is point d now at point d what happens is that the cardiac output now has returned to the normal level the cardiac output now has returned to the normal level so compensation has occurred compensation has occurred or the cardiac output the pumping the amount of blood that the heart was pumping initially has been recovered which is basically the compensation now initially there was sympathetic activation and then there was some fluid retention both of which have both of which have helped recover the function of the heart and now the cardiac output has returned to its normal level now the cardiac output is now 5 liters per minute once again and at this new point d both the venous return curve and the cardiac output return curve are meeting each other but but now the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure has further increased to actually if we exactly calculate it it should have been here this point should have been somewhere like here above the 6 so the right atrial pressure has further increased initially the right atrial pressure in the normal circumstances in the normal circumstances was 0 then the right atrial pressure increased to 4 the pressure at this point increased to 4 then with the compensation of sympathetic system the right atrial pressure increased to 5 and finally with final fluid retention the right atrial pressure in the final point is now 6 mm of mercury but due to shift in the venous return curve due to mo more fluid being accumulated in the system the pressure the force with which blood is being pumped toward the heart toward the right atrium also increases so the the right the venous return curve has also shifted rightward and the new mean systemic filling pressure now is 12 mm of mercury so now you can see that the the amount of blood that the heart was initially pumping the cardiac output has been returned back to its normal level it was initially 5 liters per minute and it is again 5 liters per minute but there are a few changes now at this time due to compensation the right atrial pressure is high the mean systemic filling pressure is high the mean systemic filling pressure is the point at which the venous return curve meet this right atrial pressure point so this black color is basically for x axis is for the right atrial pressure and the point at which the venous return curve meet, meet this x axis is basically the point which denotes the mean systemic filling pressure or the pressure with which the blood is being pumped or forced toward the heart so this mean systemic filling pressure is also increased which normally is around 6 to 7 is now 12 mm of mercury the right atrial pressure is also increased which normally is around 0 is now 6 mm of mercury but the cardiac output has been returned to normal with some further changes with some further changes if the heart function recovers with treatment with if the heart function recovers with further treatment what will happen is that this cardiac output curve this cardiac output curve it can shift even upward and it can become normal and it can again the venous return the venous return curve can shift downwards and leftward and they both can again meet each other at this point or the heart can start complete normal functioning depending depending upon the type of injury which has occurred if the injury cannot recover completely then the cardiac output may be normal but that cardiac output that normal cardiac output may be compromised that may be due to uh, with the help of increased mean systemic filling pressure and increased right atrial uh, right atrial pressure and increased venous return so that's all about the graphical analysis of acute heart failure and chronic compensation basically this uh, graph is telling us about how the cardiac output basically sh changes in the heart failure in the acute heart failure and then how the cardiac output or the heart recovers and compensation occurs and then it also shows something about the sympathetic system the role of sympathetic system and the role of fluid retention in bringing back the cardiac output uh, towards the normal level so to summarize it normally the cardiac output and the venous return curve they normally meet at point a at which the cardiac output is equal to venous return which is five liters per minute normally when acute heart failure occurs the cardiac output suddenly decreases to a new point at which the venous return is initially normal but the cardiac output has fallen down to 2 liters per minute and the two curves the venous return and the cardiac output curve they meet at a new point which is point b at this point the right atrial pressure which initially is zero normally has increased to four millimeter of mercury but the mean systemic filling pressure has not increased the mean systemic filling pressure is normally six to seven millimeter of mercury then compensation occurs by the sympathetic system the neurons the brain gets active and it increases the heart rate it increases the pumping power of the heart it increases the contraction power of the uh, blood vessels it brings more blood towards the heart and the cardiac output shifts upward the cardiac output shifts upward and the venous return curve also shift upward and rightward they meet each at a new point which is point c at the point c the cardiac output now is four liters it has slightly improved from the two liters per minute to four liters per minute but at the expense of high right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure which initially was zero millimeter of mercury has now increased to five millimeter of mercury and similarly at the expense of high 
mean systemic filling pressure. The mean systemic filling pressure, which normally is around 6 to 7, has now increased in the new curve with sympathetic compensation to 10 millimeter of mercury. With further compensation with the help of kidneys, fluid retention occur, more fluid is accumulated in the body, less urine formation occurs, and the cardiac output and venous return shift cup, uh, curves the cardiac output curve and the venous return uh, curve, they both shift upward. Now they, they meet at a new point, which is point D. At a point D, the cardiac output has returned to the normal, which is five liters per minute, but the right, the right atrial pressure is now high, which is around six millimeter of mercury. And the mean systemic filling pressure is also high. It is increased from the six or seven to 12 millimeter of mercury, or the pressure, the, the force with which blood is being returned to the heart is increased. Now, if further recovery of the heart occurs, the cardiac output can increase even further, but that depends upon the type of pathology which has inflicted the heart. So that's uh, all about the graphical analysis of acute heart failure and compensation. After that, we are going to discuss the graphical analysis of heart failure without compensation. Thanks a lot for watching the video.